Welcome to weekly news highlights where we wrap up your week with a glimpse back into what went on in the past week. I'm Kim Dami in Seoul. This Wednesday marked seven decades of the Korean War Armistice Agreement that put the fighting between the two Koreas on hold. Samsung Electronics unveiled its new Galaxy Z Flip 5 and Galaxy Z Fold 5 at an unpacked event held here in Seoul. The new Z Flip is all about a bigger cover display, while the Fold 5 has a thinner and lighter body. BTS member Jungkook has made it to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 Songs chart with his first official solo single, Seven. Now, he is the second South Korean soloist to top the list following a fellow BTS member, Jimin. Marking 70 years of the armistice agreement signed to end active fighting of the Korean War, President Yoon suk honored the hundreds of thousands of UN forces who rushed to aid the Republic of Korea in its defense of peace and democracy. Our top office correspondent Oh Soo-young reports. Solidarity for freedom is what the Republic of Korea stands for, grounded in the dedication of the United Nations forces who fought to defend the country. That's according to President Yoon suk speaking at a ceremony on Thursday, standing at the Busan Cinema Center, a former military airfield in the southern port city of Busan, where the UN troops first landed to fight alongside the South during the 1950-53 war. The ceremony marked the 70th anniversary of the Korean War Armistice Agreement, which ended active fighting and also coincides with the UN Forces Participation Day. 전혀 알지도 못하는 나라 대한민국의 자유를 지키기 위해 달려왔습니다. 오늘의 대한민국은 유엔군의 희생과 헌신 그리고 피 묻은 군복 위에 서 있습니다. Yun honored the more than 1.9 million UN troops from 22 countries who came to the South aid following North Korea's illegal invasion. Calling the UN troops the country's true heroes, Yoon personally greeted the 62 UN veterans attending the event and presented the awards to two veterans, the late Thomas Colon Parkinson from Australia and Donald Reed from the US. The president vowed to never forget their sacrifices and the bloodshed to fight communist forces, which enabled the South to grow as a liberal democracy and market economy. He noted that Busan City, which saw over a million refugees during the Korean War, is now the world's second largest transshipment port and a global logistics hub, with the city now preparing to host the World Expo 2030 and position itself as a platform to seek solutions to the challenges facing humanity. Yoon said South Korea will ensure the value of freedom extends to the future generations. The United 자유 민주주의 국가들과 연대하고 한미 동맹을 핵심 축으로 하여 인도 태평양 지역뿐 아니라 전 세계의 자유 평화 번영을 위해 노력할 것입니다. US President Joe Biden on Wednesday had declared July 27th National Korean War Veterans Armistice Day, calling the ROC US alliance the linchpin of peace, stability and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region and around the world. Ahead of the ceremony, President Yoon and First Lady Kim Goni were joined by government officials from the 22 countries comprising the UN forces to pay their respects at the United Nations Memorial Cemetery. The burial ground in Busan is the only UN cemetery in the world. More than 2,300 people from 11 countries lie at rest there. Oh Soo-young, Aerang News. Now, millions of people died during the Korean War, with many of those who fought still accounted for. However, the remains of seven South Korean troops finally made it home on Wednesday. More than seven decades after he fought and died in the Korean War, the remains of the then 19-year-old Private First Class Chaemlat came home to South Korea and his surviving family. Carried in the arms of his nephew, who is currently serving in the Navy, Che was reunited with his youngest brother, who was six years old when Che died in 1950, but is now approaching 80. You are now in the arms of my boy who we sent to the Navy. Is he holding you comfortably? Big brother, don't worry about our country anymore, but rest peacefully in our land. 
I will live in gratitude to our nation for bringing you back to us. Che had been identified among the seven sets of remains of South Korean soldiers killed during the 1950-53 war, handed over from US custody in Hawaii and flown to Seoul Air Base on Wednesday evening. Coming home on an Air Force tanker, escorted by a squadron of F-35A fighter jets, the remains of the fallen soldiers received a hero's welcome in a reception ceremony hosted by President Yoon Seo-yo. Yoon was joined by top Korean and US military officials to pay their utmost respects, greeting the arrival with the highest military honour, a 21-gun salute. Yoon presented each of the seven soldiers, six of them yet to be identified, with combat medals for their bravery and sacrifice. The repatriated troops were among the remains collected by both US and North Korean excavations during the war and in the decades following. Initially believed to be American soldiers, the remains were later identified through joint forensic analysis as troops of the South Korean army. Che's remains were delivered to Seoul National Cemetery, the resting place for fallen patriots and heroes, while the other six sets of remains will undergo forensics and DNA testing to identify the soldiers. Since 2012, the remains of 313 troops have been repatriated to South Korea from the US over seven occasions. Only 19 of them so far have been identified. After the president pledged last month all-out efforts to return the nation's war dead to the arms of their surviving families, his office said on Wednesday that Yoon's first ceremony for the fallen soldiers' remains was organised with the conviction that the lives lost in the line of duty should serve as a call for our duty to remember them. Young Arirang News. And it wasn't just South and North Koreans who died during the battles. There were foreign soldiers who stepped up and sacrificed their lives. And to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the signing of the Korean War Armistice, which effectively put an end to the fighting, there was a special dinner hosting and honoring foreign veterans and delegations from countries that fought alongside the South. Our Choi Min Jung was there. Ninety-three-year-old British veteran Colin Thackeray passionately sings the Korean traditional folk song, Arirang. Thackeray is among the 64 Korean War veterans currently in South Korea to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Korean War Armistice Agreement. He was invited to sing the song at the Thank You Banquet in Busan on Wednesday evening, recalling the times he had done with his comrades during the war. The Minister of Patriots and Veterans Affairs also showed appreciation for their sacrifice and contributions to the development of South Korea. The solidarity brought together 16 nations that sent their combat troops, six nations that provided medical support, and 38 nations that sent materials to Korea. These countries gave us the greatest victory and forces that led to the successful post-war reconstruction of our country. U.S.-Korean War veteran William Word said he's been thanked many times, but all the honor should go to the Korean people. When I went home, my home was still standing. My family was complete. But when survival came along, the people of Korea rebuilt their nation, their homes, their cities, their families, and their lives. South Korea also hosted the 2023 Ministerial Summit on Veterans Affairs, which was attended by government delegations from 22 countries who supported South Korea during the Korean War. Luxembourg's Prime Minister Xavier Bettel said no matter how far away Luxembourg is from South Korea, solidarity and support are what matter when fighting for values and democracy. But uh, we know how important it is to fight for democracies, to fight for values has no borders and you find everywhere partners to fight when it's time to defend democracy. Minister Park proposed a joint declaration to reaffirm the values of freedom defended by the 22 nations 70 years ago, as well as joint efforts toward achieving world peace. South Korea also held bilateral discussions with Australia, France, Luxembourg and Turkey to further solidify the friendships established during the Korean War. Choi Min-dong, Arirang News, Busan. 
And three veterans from the U.S., U.K. and Canada who fought in the Korean War also visited South Korea. Looking back on the war, they impressed their gratitude and said they would do it all over again. Our Kim jong Shil has their story about witnessing Korea then and now. Korean War veterans Edward Bugner, William Ward, and Colin Thackeray are visiting the country whose independence they fought for so many years ago. They were invited here by South Korea's Ministry of Patriots and Veterans Affairs to mark the 70th anniversary of the armistice that ended the conflict. All are from different countries and have backgrounds, but the veterans share one thing in common. They fought for Korea, a foreign land. Having witnessed the tragedy of the war, the veterans expressed their impressions of Korean people during that time. You had, just like I've always said, you had to be there to see it. But uh, the Korean people deserve a hell of a lot because they were, they were, the, they were the heroes, they really were. To, you know, to live this thing out, and to, uh, it was just something else. Yeah. Veteran William Ward added that he's proud of having fought for Korea and that he'll do it all over again. They took the moment to look for someone, too. Canadian veteran Edward Bogner said he's looking for a Korean boy who used to clean his military tent during the war. Do you remember his name? Yes. I think it's Cho Chok Song. I've had that picture all along. The Canadian veteran also showed a strong emotion when thinking back on the war. I am so grateful that you took what you got and made it what you have. It's a beautiful country. British-Korean War veteran Colin Thackeray expressed his impressions on being back in Seoul. Coming to to Seoul for the first time. And I was amazed uh, because last time we saw it was flat. <laughs> yeah. Now there's just hundreds and hundreds of towers of apartment blocks. And I, I congratulate the Korean people on, on the, the success yeah. and the prosperity that they should now show. War veteran and also something of a singer, Colin expressed his feelings about being asked to sing a Korean traditional folk song, Arirang, at a Korean war armistice event to be held in Busan. Arirang brings a lot of memories because I don't think many servicemen that served in Korea at that time uh, don't know that song because it's uh, very familiar to everybody. And um, when I was asked to sing it at the banquet tomorrow, I was very delighted. The three veterans from different countries seem to have found a reason why they fought for Korea. Kim Jong-sil, Arirang News. In the meantime, the anniversary marking the Korean War Armistice Agreement is known as Victory Day in North Korea. As the regime has done so in the past, the North carried out a nighttime military parade on the day. North Korea staged a huge military parade on Thursday night to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the armistice that ended the Korean War, or what the North calls Victory Day. The opening ceremony for the event reportedly started at around 8 p.m., followed by the parade, which went on for about two hours. Edited video footage on the North State Television on Friday afternoon showed the regime displaying intercontinental ballistic missiles, including the Hwasong-18 and Hwasong-17. The state media described them as the most powerful means of the country's strategic force to counter enemies' nuclear threats. The parade also featured a flyover by new spy and attack drones, revealed in photos of an arms exhibition the day before. The spy drone looked just like the U.S. Global Hawk surveillance aircraft, and the attack drone resembled a U.S. MQ-9 Reaper. Other than the unmanned drones, no other new weapons were introduced. Also showcased at the parade was a North's underwater drone called Hail which the regime claims to be capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was at the event but did not deliver a speech. Instead, the North's defense minister did, accusing the U.S. and its allies of increasing tensions in the region. We are ready. It's for the enemies to decide. We will defend our country from any more danger, no matter the cost. 
Russian and Chinese officials who had come to Pyongyang this week also attended the parade. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and Chinese Communist Party Politburo member Li Hongjung were seen standing shoulder to shoulder with Kim Jong-un. Throughout the event, Kim was seen constantly talking and exchanging smiles with the two officials, apparently to show that the North is backed by these two neighboring countries. One expert also says the delegation taking part in the event likely means the North's COVID-19 lockdown is coming to an end. The North Korean regime is uh, moving inching, inch closer to actual opening of the national borders, which means that the resumption of trade with China in full scale. Uh, in coming uh, days. The visits of Russian and Chinese officials are the first known foreign delegations to visit North Korea since the pandemic began. Peunz, Arirang News. And in time for the anniversary, South Korea and France conducted their first ever air drills this week. Our Choi min Jung has this report. South Korea and France held their first ever joint air exercises over the skies of Busan on Tuesday. The training comes as part of France's annual Pegas 23 mission, which is aimed at increasing its military presence and influence in the Indo-Pacific region. The mission involves the deployment of tens of aircraft from France to the Indo-Pacific to promote cooperation with regional countries, especially with partners like South Korea. Establishing a mutual understanding on issues in this region, it's a process of jointly preparing solutions in various fields, whether that be issues regarding security, the environment, or the pandemic. The Korean Air Force participated with three F-15Ks and two F-16 fighters, while the French Air and Space Force fielded two Rafale fighters, the country's key fighter aircraft capable of performing various combat missions, including nuclear deterrence as well as one A400M transport aircraft and an A330 multi-role tanker transport. These fighter jets from both countries also flew over the UN Memorial Cemetery in Busan to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Korean War Armistice Agreement on Thursday. More than 40 French veterans who have dedicated their lives to the Korean War are buried in Busan's UN Memorial Cemetery. We, the people of the Republic of Korea, have not forgotten the help provided by over 20 UN countries during the Korean War. I think it is very meaningful to have their descendants gather and train together. The French Air and Space Force is on a three-day stop in South Korea until Wednesday. Although it's a short period of time, both South Korea and France hope to further expand their military exchanges in the future by sharing each other's know-how and conducting joint exercises in various locations. Che Min Jung, Arirang News, Busan. The latest line of foldable smartphones from South Korea's tech giant Samsung Electronics was unveiled on Wednesday. Now, for the first time, the Galaxy Unpacked event took place here in Seoul. Joining me here in the studio is our Moon Haedan. Welcome, Haedan. Thank you for having me. Haedan, let's first talk about the actual products that took center stage this time. Sure, Dami. The reveal was centered around the latest model from Samsung's signature line of foldable smartphones, the Galaxy Z Flip 5 and the Galaxy Z Fold 5. As you can tell by these names, these are the fifth generation models and have a number of upgrades from the fourth generation foldable. The biggest feature that both these models share is the new hinge, which enables the phones to fold over completely with minimal screen creases. That sounds great. Then what are the upgrades that are specifically unique to each model? Let's first start with Z Flip 5. There are a number of upgrades for the Z Flip 5. It has a larger cover display that's almost double the size of the previous model, measuring 3.4 inches. This larger screen will come in handy for users that want to take advantage of the new dual view function that can be used while taking photos. It allows both the subject and the user to see the image on the cover and the main screen at the same time. So I could take a photo of you here and you'd be able to see it on your side of the screen. But without the larger screen, users will be able to access a variety of functions while the phone is folded, such as texting, checking the weather, controlling the music player, and even catching up on the latest global stock market updates. So definitely a larger screen, meaning perfect for those selfies or even group selfies, right? Exactly. Then what about Z Fold 5? So as for the Fold 5, it now comes in a sleeker body. 
It weighs 253 grams and is the thinnest and lightest model in the series yet. The Galaxy Fold 5 also has an update to its taskbar so that users can now access and switch between up to four apps. In addition to this update, the new drag motion, which is being called the two-handed drag and drop move, lets users select an image from the gallery with one hand and paste it into the Samsung Notes page using the other hand. So both phones will be available for pre-order starting Tuesday, and it goes on sale on August 11th. The Galaxy Flip 5 is priced at US$999 and the Fold at US$1,799. $1,800. I mean, the prices are pretty steep, right? Yeah, they are. Then, I guess Samsung Electronics has firmly established itself in the premium smartphone market now, I would say. Right, so the definition of a premium smartphone that's generally agreed on is one that's priced over $600, which both of these new models are. And it's these premium smartphones that are becoming increasingly dominant in the smartphone market, making up over half the total sales back in 2020. An expert spoke to Arirang News about Samsung Electronics' new focus as shown with their new foldable models. Competition in the foldable market seems to have intensified as companies like Motorola and Google have also entered the market. However, a company that first entered the market with better technologies would dominate. Samsung is expected to lead the market. Apple is actually responsible for roughly three quarters of total premium smartphone sales. But with the revamping of Samsung Electronics mobile and consumer electronics businesses into a single device experience unit last year with a greater emphasis on user experience, the expectation is that their new strategy will help them catch up in the game. But in the foldable smartphone market itself, Samsung Electronics is far ahead with 62% of the market share and is also top in the overall global smartphone market. There's a lot of weighing on these smartphones, despite how much they've gotten lighter, right? Yeah. Then I guess it's just as well how stars like BTS member Suga attended the event to show support for South Korea's leading smartphones, right? Absolutely. It's the first time that Samsung Unpacked has taken place here in Seoul. The event has been hosted in cities all around the world, including Barcelona, London and San Francisco in years past. And in hindsight, Samsung Impact in Seoul was long overdue. Industry insiders are saying that one of the reasons it was hosted in its home country this time round is to show support for South Korea's bid for the World Expo in Busan. With the Unpacked event's poster showing South Korean landmarks such as the Namsan Tower here in Seoul, it's sending a clear message that foldable smartphones are from South Korea and Samsung Electronics is the creator. This was also reflected in the design of the Experience Zone at the event, which incorporated traditional Korean forms of art. Well, with that message, I'll have to check out the phones myself when they're released next month. You definitely should. All right, Hedan, thank you so much for the wrap-up today. It was my pleasure. The International Monetary Fund has lowered South Korea's 2023 economic growth outlook to 1.4 percent. The organization pointed to persistent challenges in the global economy like weak exports as reasons for the downward revision. Let's turn to our Lee kyung for more. The International Monetary Fund cut its 2023 economic growth outlook for South Korea on Tuesday to 1.4 percent, down 0.1 percentage point from its previous estimate of 1.5 percent in April. The Washington-based organization cited uncertainties facing South Korea from both home and abroad, including global monetary tightening measures and weak export figures. The latest forecast is on par with the South Korean government and the Bank of Korea's outlook of 1.4 percent. However, the Asian Development Bank last week lowered the country's growth outlook to 1.3 percent, down 0.2 percentage point from its previous estimates. Despite the downward revision of South Korea's economic growth forecast for this year, the IMF kept its estimates for 2024 at 2.4 percent. In the meantime, the IMF revised up its 2023 global economic growth outlook to 3 percent, a 0.2 percentage point from its previous estimate. The upward revision comes on the back of the recovery in the service sector, its U.S. debt ceiling woes, and abated concerns over a crisis in the banking sector. However, the IMF warns that the global economy is facing lingering challenges despite near-term resilience, adding the countries around the world should remain their monetary tightening policies. Young Eun, Arirang News.
Just over a week after its release, BTS Jungkook's solo single, Seven, has topped the Billboard Hot 100 Songs chart. The latest achievement makes Jungkook just the second South Korean solo artist since his fellow group member Jimin topped the chart in April with his single, Like Crazy. According to the Billboard chart as of Monday, Seven had sold 153,000 song downloads and CD singles combined while drawing 21.9 million streams and 6.4 million radio airplay audience impressions. Now, as a group, BTS and their song Dynamite, a remix of Savage Love, Life Goes On, Butter, Permission to Dance, and My Universe all top the Billboard Hot 100 charts, making the K-pop stars a regular at the top of the list. Now, Jungkook is also the sixth member of the Seven Piece group to have debuted as a solo artist. We thank you for watching weekly news highlights. Have a lovely weekend.